Look, I want to give a moment of silence to the families of the victims and the victims and everyone who was involved in the shooting that happened in Kansas City during the Super Bowl parade. You know, from reports, it was about 10 injured and one dead. Look, man, real quick, before we get into this, man, I want to congratulate the Chiefs on winning the Super Bowl and beating the Winers. Now that Mahomes, Andy, and Spags ran the Winers out of Vegas, let's go ahead and run the intro. Look, man, just in case y'all forgot, man, make sure y'all like, make sure y'all comment, make sure y'all subscribed up, make sure y'all hit that notification bell, man, so you always up to date. But real quick, man, I want to give my thoughts on the Super Bowl. You know, for the first three quarters, that game was extremely, extremely boring. I'm talking about, I was like, wow, man, this is, this sucks. And then about midway through the fourth you know, and into overtime, you know, the game became exciting. You know, I actually enjoyed watching it at that point. You know, of course, I wanted to see my team, the Philadelphia Eagles, in there. But at the same time, it's the last game of the year. You know, why not just give it a look-see? That's how I feel. I just love ball, so I got to do that pause. You know, but um, I'm just happy that Andy Reid won. I'm happy that Andy Reid won. One thing I did not like, though, man, one thing I did not like was what Travis Kelsey did to Andy Reid. That, that wasn't a good look, bro. That wasn't a good look. You know, even Kelsey had some some things to say about that, man, because that just – it's not going to fly with us. I just don't like that. I ain't like none of it. You know, Andy Reid is a legend, special guy, man, for this league, and you just can't run up on him, try to run him over. You know, you probably could have knocked his hip out of place, anything. You know what I'm saying? But I just don't like the fact that when you get upset like that, you start attacking your superiors. I don't know if that's a, if that's a good look. You know what I mean? But the game was cool. Uh, watching the, the 49ers lose again was amazing. Um, letting letting everybody understand that Brock Purdy is a good quarterback, but he got to be a dog to beat uh, Patrick Mahomes. Jalen Hurts, in my opinion, outplayed Patrick Mahomes in a Super Bowl and still lost. You have to be different if you want to beat Patrick Mahomes, man. The goal for every quarterback – in this league right now is to beat Patrick Mahomes is to get the accolades that Patrick Mahomes has. That's that should be the goal for every quarterback in the league right now, including my quarterback. You know what I mean? That dude is nasty. Um, him, Andy Spags, that defense played amazing. Um, um, the play call um, and overtime when they stopped the 49ers from scoring the play call from Spags, that blitz was bar none a great play call. Then they closed the game out with the same play that they closed the game out um, on us. <laughs> the same exact play, man. That's that's the type of person that that you have um, in Andy Reid, man. And I love Andy Reid. I always will. Um, coach for the Philadelphia Eagles. Always was the guy. I always thought that, you know, the reason why Andy left here is because all of the, you know, complications that Andy was having around that time, you know, which – all that is for another video. You know, Donovan McNabb played a part in that, you know, but at the same time, it is what it is. But Andy just deserved everything he's getting. And it was just good to watch the 49ers. Oh, my bad. Sorry. The 40 Winers get exposed. It was great. And it just let me know that it doesn't matter what type of season Kansas City have. They can have a bad season. They can have a good season. As long as they punch their ticket to the playoffs, they are a threat to win the whole thing. And, you know, the big question this year is can they three-peat? Because he just won two in a row. Can he three-peat? It's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough. But that would definitely, you know, solidify him, you know, taking that next step and becoming one of the greats. So, you know, that's that was pretty cool. It is what it is. Season over. Time to gear up for 2024. Um, I don't know what's up with my birds yet. I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still diving into it. 
with the new hires of Kellen Moore and, and Vic Fangio um, and the personnel issues. I just don't know about the Philadelphia Eagles yet. Uh, I want to be confident, but I'm, I'm not just yet. I got to see what, how we do. Um, I got to see how this offseason shake up. Eagles signed 25-year-old is former third-rounder outside linebacker Julian Aquara. He played his last four years in Detroit, more of a password rusher. Hopefully this is not a sign, you know, that the Eagles are moving on from Haas. Like, you know, that's two different style linebackers, two different caliber linebackers. So I, I know that don't even line up, but he is more of a pass rusher. Um, but I think that he could be some depth to this roster, just like he was in Detroit. He was more of a depth guy, um, a rotational piece, pause. Um, and with linebacker being a major concern for us, um, I just don't see him, you know, coming in and starting, but I definitely think that he can come in, you know, and put some, put, put a couple of plays together. He's not played in more than 13 games in a single season. His stats over the last few years are he had 55 total tackles. I think we had 55 total tackles, nine sacks, one interception. You know, he only played nine games this past season. You know, he only, and he had what, two sacks. So he was waived by the Lions, and then they signed him to the practice squad during the playoffs. So, you know, I'm going to definitely keep you all updated on Julian and how he turns out for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, but for now, man, we need to talk about our linebacker, our guy, Haas, Hassan Reddick. You know, reports came out that Hassan Reddick was approved to seek a trade, you know, like he was the one initiating the trade. But then come to find out, Haas never asked for a, a trade. He didn't request one. Um, and he did say, but he understand that this is a business. And I'm going to tell you how I feel about this. And first, I'm going to tell you some G-ish. And then I'm going to tell you how I think it might go. You know what I'm saying? For real, stop playing with Haas bread. You know what I'm saying? Get Haas' bread. He deserve it, bro. This man, has he's been by far one of our best defensive players, if not the best, the most solid guy since he's been here. Stop playing with Haas bread. You know what I'm saying? Now, this is how I think it's going to play out. I think that Howie Roseman is testing to see what Haas could get, you know, out there, and then he's going to probably either match it, you know, or try to, you know, give Haas – a little bit more money. You know how, how he is, man. He know how to work this, but he's probably just letting him go out and see how much he worth, see what his worth is. You know what I mean? And then he's going to, um, how we going to make a decision. But right now, bro, you know, I don't want a second round for Haas. You know, I don't want, I mean, a first round would be something that be something different, but I doubt that we get that for a 30 year old pass rusher. You know what I'm saying? So, but I don't want the second rounder for Haas. I want Hassan Reddick. You know what I'm saying? We got to make sure Hassan Reddick is in midnight green. So, Howie, I don't know what you got to do to make it shape. But trust me, you got to make it shape ASAP. <laughs> so, you know, um, I'm going to keep you updated on the status of Hassan Reddick. You know, he also said, that he don't he wants to be an eagle. You know, I want to put that out there. He wants to be an eagle. He don't want to go nowhere. But you know, he has earned a right to say he needs a raise. Like it's a lot of guys that's getting bread right now, like Bradbury, who we, you know, the contract is a little bit iffy. It's probably one of the hardest to get out. You know what I'm saying? He earned his bread. So stop playing with Hassan Reddick bread. Get that man his capital. He deserve it, man. He deserve it. So uh, I'll definitely keep you updated on that. You know, I can't wait to be the one to say, look, man, we done signed Hassan. I mean, we done, we done got Hassan Reddick the bread. We done extended him. Pause. You know what I'm saying? We done got him what he need to feel comfortable in midnight green. And it's time to get to work. I can't wait. But look, man, real quick, I want to get into something, man. Jalen Carter has something to say to Jonathan Feliciano, guard. For the 40 winers, after Feliciano blamed teammate Spencer Buford for missing a key block during overtime on social media, 
you know, basically, this is how this story unfolded. In the world of professional sports, tensions run high, both on the field and off the field. Recently, a series of events unfolded between two players that shed the light on the complexities of competition, character, and consequences. Carter and Feliciano stemming from an on-field incident during the game. Emotions escalated as accusations were exchanged and personal attacks were made. Tragically, Carter's past collided with the present when he lost a teammate and friend in a devastating accident. The aftermath of this event left Carter grappling with grief and anger. Legal proceedings followed with Carter facing repercussions from his involvement in the accident. Despite the challenges, Carter's talent earned him a spot in the NFL, but not without scrutiny of his character. So Carter said, shaking my head, same dude who spoke on my dead teammate. Um, Feliciano said, Dude told me he was going to murder me and my kids. As the dust settled, both players reflected on the events that transpired. Feliciano acknowledged the gravity of the situation while defending his actions, citing the need to protect his family. This is kind of how I feel about the situation. You know what I'm saying? Like this guy right here, Feliciano, in my opinion, he's probably hard to trust. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's been a lot of you know, here's he say she's saying a lot of chatter about you know how he talked to his players, the guys, his teammates, the guy he who he played with, the guy who he you know go to war with. Those guys, you know, he be running his mouth with a bunch of chatter, and then he come back the next day, you know what I'm saying, and he got a different type of rat, and that's and we gotta <laughs> that those type of people, bro, you gotta really watch those type of people, man. I'm telling you, the ones that just get in, get that liquid, like my G's, my dog say, Jose, you said that liquid get to their brain, you know what I mean? And they start saying and doing whatever, the, you know what I mean? Come to their brain. And then you got to sit here and shake back the next day, you know what I'm saying? And retract your whole statement. And then you done did that once, twice. Nah, I don't care about none of that. It ain't happening. It's not happening on the side. So for me, how I feel, it's a EAD for um, Jonathan Feliciano. You know what I'm saying? We all know what EAD mean. Pause. Because uh, Fletcher Cox let us know, you know what I mean, what, what he told uh, Debo. He told Debo the EAD in a tweet uh, last week. You know, real savage-like. Basically saying, keep my, keep my team out your mouth. Pause. Because y'all went in there and stunk it up and lost too. You know what I mean? Got exposed. We actually went to war with these guys. Threw up a bunch of points. You know, Jalen, you know, had his couple of little stumbles in the Super Bowl, but he played amazing. Definitely played better than Purdy, in my opinion. You know what I mean? So, like I said, Feliciano, EAD. Um, and uh, that's the reason why um, Jalen Carter was crying in that game on the sideline because of the comments that Feliciano said about Jalen Carter's dead um, teammate. You know, it had to, they had to hit home. When that's your homie, bro, and, you know, you know, you out there, you got money, you in a fast car, trust me, I got a fast car. You got to be you got to be careful in your fast car. You know what I'm saying? Like, you get in your fast car and you doing, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you, it get out of hand. I already know. I already know what it is. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I know I had to touch home with him, and he probably got emotional. It, the game wasn't going our way. We was getting blown out, and this dude talking crazy. Nah, man. I know I know. sometimes it, it, even the report said that Carter said that he was going to murder him, you know, so so and he wasn't going to be available for his family or whatever or something like that, a whoop-de-whoop. But, you know, at the same time, um, you, you, you really – you really brought up a situation that was really tough and he probably had to, he probably had to get his get back. Probably had to get his get back. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. But you know, with, with saying all that, man, I'm not about to sit and hold y'all too long, man. We're going to leave it right here. Cause you know, I'm going to be back. Like I never left. Um, make sure you, you check me out always right here on the diamond crew sports podcast, but you can also check me out now um, on the on the Eagle Playbook podcast with my dogs Quezzy, 
my dog Kev, my dog uh, Wheezy the Dreaded Eagle, um, Daga, all those guys, man. All those guys, we be we be rocking out at least once a week. So make sure y'all y'all tap them with us right there. Make sure y'all checking that out. Make sure y'all commenting. Make sure y'all hitting those guys up on their page and liking and commenting and because they got that fire content. You know what I'm saying? So make sure y'all do all that, man. As always, out.